Yeah. 
worthy of our praise. He's worthy of worship. Amen. He's the God that saves. Yeah. 
step for her, something she'll never forget. Amen. And just thank God for that. Amen. 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 I have a very special prayer request. Uh, a real dear friend of ours, Julie, who comes to healing school, has battled many battles with cancer. And uh, she had uh, kidney cancer. She had uh, thyroid cancer. She had lymphoma cancer. And uh, beat it all and went to the doctor last night with a severe headache and had been having a headache for about a week. They done a scan on her and found that she had a large tumor in her brain that's bleeding. And what's kept her from having a stroke is the Lord. She was talking, moving all her parts, and we just give God glory. But they shipped her to Baptist, and we will be, a few of us will be leaving here after church to go and be with her. But my, my favorite part about the whole story is that immediately when they told her, her diagnosis. She looked right at me and she said, but the Bible says in Psalms 91 16 with long life he was going to satisfy me and show me his salvation. I'm going to live long. She looked right at the doctor and she said, I'm going to live long on the earth. She said, the tests do not determine how long I live. My faith in God determines my length of days. She was strengthening my faith. I'm standing there and she's strengthening me. Amen. Amen. <coughs> you know, you don't need faith when you're on the mountain. Yeah. You need faith when you're facing these valleys. Yeah. You're going through. Good notice, going through this storm. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Yes. We never know from Amen. one day to the next what attack the enemy is going to bring on our life. But one thing we do know is he's going to deliver us out of them all. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Well, Becky, come and give your announcements. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. After that, you should have just prayed. <laughs> come on. Um, announcements can wait. But you know, I, I've not been in the shape that um, Julie has been in in the trial she's faced, but I have faced cancer. And, and you know, it is the time when you don't fall apart like a two dollar watch. You do what you've been taught. And, you know, I've been where she's at. When they give you that cancer diagnosis, you're just in shock. Your body, you don't know what to say, what to do. And the Lord just appeared my pastor I used to have before my face. And it's like he shook me to shake me out of wherever my body, whatever state it went into, I couldn't think. And it's like he came before me as plain as I would have been. And he, could, he shook me and he said, Becky, this is not the time to fall apart like a $2 watch. Do what I taught you, babe. And so I had to shake myself and was able to walk out of that doctor's office without shedding one tear because I was able to hold my composure. And I'm, But when I got to my car, I kind of lost it with God. I'm like, God, what is going on? You know, this you know, can't be happening to me. But, you know, he had to remind me, just like she said, it rains on the just and the unjust. But, you know, what? I'm still alive today. I've had cancer, what, three times now myself. And, you know, the devil would love to take us out if we would allow him to take us out. You know, we have that right and that authority to live on and do what the Bible says. You know, that's our life and our roadmap. And, and you know, we have to build our faith up. And, and Julie is an awesome testimony, such a woman of God. And, and, you know, she has such good friends. And then everybody around here praying for her. You know, we have to come together. You know, and sometimes we, and I've had, I had times when I had to call on Pastor Tammy because it gets overwhelming. And, you know, you just you feel like quitting. You feel like giving up. And at those are the times when we, we need each other to come alongside us and lift us up and help us. Don't give up. You know, this thing works when we work it. 
It really does, and we have to stay a hold of faith. But um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the prayer request, just because that seems it's just more important than the announcements. You know, Julie, you know, is a top of our priority this morning for prayer. And um, Tanya has an uh, uncle, Larry Miller, who has prostate cancer. Uh, they've already removed his prostate, but he's, they're still finding cancer. So, you know, we, we need to pray for him this morning. And uh, Cindy and my mom and some others are traveling back from West Virginia today. We had a family reunion up there yesterday, so uh, they won't be coming back today. We just pray for safety for them as they try. Did anybody have another one?
we certainly have a lot to pray for, uh, Pastor Daniel. I feel glad that we need the gentleman for his eyesight. And, um, Jim, if y'all will come up here uh, to pray for your, your eye condition. And for uh, Pastor Daniel as well. When she's up here, uh, Nanny can... Uh, Tanya, everybody that has a family member, yes, that has cancer that you're pleading for, come up here and stand in for them. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now. Uh, Christy, you are the God that saves. Go ahead. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God for miracles. We're going to see miracles in this place take place. Uh, let's lay hands on this. We're going to get a creative here. Cast our touches and eyes. You're tall enough. I'm not tall enough. I can't even believe it. <laughs> right now, in the name of Jesus, we curse blindness. We command blindness to dissipate right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you. We release the healing power of God right now. Eyes, we command you to see in the name of Jesus. Open up and see the glory of the Lord. Open up and see the wonders of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are the one that grants me.
or in relationship, maybe engaged, ready to get married. Yes. We may have people here that have that are with us, men or women, yes. that need to be with us to. Yes. God prepares us to say a word to you in the season that you need to hear it. Yes. This is holy ground right here yes. for God to work. Yes. And if you come and be a part of it, during those times, we do it. The last Sunday, our singles group is on Sunday night, the last Sunday of the month. And God prepares us. Now, most time I come in and I sit quietly. I don't say a whole lot. But I'm there to hear a word from the Lord for me. Because it is our place to show the Spirit of the Lord in this place. Yes. And we want to do it in love. This is a safe place to come. This is a safe place to be. If you're young in marriage, that's a good place to come. Yes, it is. Because if the Lord gives us a word to say and you're not here, He tells me, He tells her not to say it because you're not here to hear it. So we need to prepare ourselves to be available <clears throat> to the Holy Spirit. And I have to be obedient to stand here and tell this. And I want to be obedient. Let me tell you, I've been, I've been wrong in my in times to not be obedient. And the Lord tell me, you just missed the blessing. You just missed the blessing. So I don't miss no blessings. I want to do. If it may look foolish in the eyes of others, then let that be. Amen. I, I want to be online <laughs> and in tune with what God wants yeah. to do with it. Amen. My name is Leonard Joseph <coughs> Allen, and I approve this message. <laughs> I was trying to get me not to do what the Lord said to do. He said, for everybody to stretch your hands this way, because our pastors are going to go lay hands on Julie today. And that same creative miracle, the atmosphere that's in here, needs to be in their hands when they touch her. And everybody just stretch your hands out this way and pray for them. Father, we just thank you, Lord, right now. Father, for our anointed pastors and Father, we just ask that you lift their spirits and their hearts are heavy for their sheep. Father, you've placed under their care. And Father, right now, we come alongside them and we join up our faith, Father, and for the creative miracle that Julie needs, Father, to flow through their hands and to touch her and raise her out of that bed that it would amaze the doctors and amaze everyone around her. And Father, use this to draw her family near unto you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the creative miracle that is able to touch and heal her body.
All you have to do is stand up, let that light shine. Those demons will have to leave. They cannot come against you. And then you can do the battle. Because the word of God says, my sheep will know my voice. You will hear what he has to say. You will know what he has to say. You will know what he wants done. You will be ready to get done. You be, will be ready to follow him. You will do his will. You will be able to defeat the enemy. The enemy was defeated the day that Jesus Christ stood up and walked out of that tomb. I stood inside that tomb. I saw where they laid my Savior. And he wasn't there. Muhammad is in his grave. Buddha is in his grave. But my Savior is not in his grave. My Savior is a Savior. Father, he is praying for each and every one of you. He is going battle for each and every one of you. He is trying to get through to you. And if there is anyone, anyone, if you even have this much of a doubt, if the Holy Spirit is not working in your life, get up here right now. Get up here this instant. The Holy Spirit will fall on you as in the second book of Acts. As it said, it came down as if it was a mighty rushing wind. There was so much noise when the Holy Spirit entered in that everybody in town, they came to find out what was going on. They said that the Holy Spirit sat down as if it was a flame. You can see the glory of God sit down on each and every one. And He will sit down on anybody today. All you got to do is that. So if there's anybody... If it hasn't been working the way that you think it should be, if it hasn't been as strong as if it hasn't been as strong as you want it to be, all you got to do is come up here right now and ask. I will pray with you. Our pastors will pray with you. The Holy Spirit will fall. The Shekinah glory is in His house. walls are lined with angels. And they're ready. Those angels are ready to reach out, to touch, to heal, to mend, to make brand new, to fix, whatever it is. You can read the Bible and you can read it and read it and read it. You'll never find one place where Jesus turned anybody away. You'll never find any place where they said, if you are willing, and he would say, I am willing. All you got to do is have the faith. All you got to do is have the Holy Spirit working in your life. And if that Holy Spirit's working, you can get the faith. And if you can get the faith, then you can have the promises. He already promised it. He didn't lie. He won't take it away. He will give you what He says that He will give you. That is the God that we serve. So if there's anything, anything that you need, anything that you want, anything that you're looking for, all you need to do is come up here right now <laughs> and you will receive from the Almighty God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the tenacious faith, Father, that we have in this house. 
to not ever give up on people. And Father, we just lift up Julie and her husband and, and her family and just we just ask that you send skilled laborers to them to encourage them, Father. Help them to stay in the fight of faith. It's a good fight, but it's a good fight of faith, Father. Help them to see that and lay hold of it and not give up. Father, we thank you for that. Father, we lift up Ruby as she's having surgery. Father, we just pray right now that that be a textbook procedure. And Father, that, that you just touch her body. Just heal her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Father, we thank you for that. And for Scott, Father, we thank you. We bound up that spirit of cancer that's trying to attack his body, Father. We, we call him healed and made well. Father, we pray for Julie. We pray for a speedy, a speedy recovery for her hand, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you just strengthen her to do what you've called her to do. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and the praise, Father, for everything you've done in this house today and for everything you're going to do. And, Father, we praise you ahead of time for the rest of this service. We're just excited and expecting everything that you have for us. Let us leave here not the same, but change, to go out and change this world for you. Father, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. For sake of time, I'm not going to do the offering confession, but if you have your tithes and offerings, get those out. And we're going to go ahead and lift those up and pray over those. And just a quick announcement. I think we pretty much covered them all, but um, the Hand of God uh, ministry needs uh, peanut butter and jelly and chips and cakes and any of that stuff. If you, um, or if you want to make a donation towards that, or mark them on the wrong road. Uh, but we can bring those items in any time, and we appreciate that. And also a reminder, our ladies' pool party is this Saturday coming up the 21st at 12 o'clock. Um, if you can uh, be there, it's going to be at the pastor's house. If you just need to see us for the address and everything, you can help with that. And we're probably going to do uh, cold cut sandwiches, so if you want to, you know, get with me and let me know what you want to bring to contribute. We'll, we'll get together on that. I meant to have the sheet out there today. Tell me about it. I'm not worried about that. But Father, we just thank you for the tithes and offerings, Lord. We thank you that you uh, placed that in our hands, Father, that, that it's just a good stewardship, Father. We thank you for making us to be good stewards over your finances. And Father, we ask that you take whatever seed is sown and multiply it and use it for your kingdom's use, Father. We thank you for souls to be saved and bodies to be healed. Father, we thank you that you just bless and prosper this church. Father, as we go about doing your work and your will, and we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Pastor Tony, let's give her a welcome. Give the Lord a hand clap. Where's your name? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's worthy of that. He's worthy of that. If you are a youth, we'd like you to go with Brother Cornelius. If you're a child, you go with Miss Pam. I know that those of you who are a child at heart, stay up here with me. Amen. We're going to have a good time in the Lord this morning. Oh, we're have a great time in the Lord this morning. He just set it up for us to minister easy for you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this message that you've burned in our hearts. We thank you that it will burn in the hearts of those who hear it. Let us not be hearers only today, God, but let us be doers of the word. As we stand behind this desk, we know that if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to do it. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. We don't have any anointing, but you have all the anointing. And we just lean on that anointing and lean on the truth of the Word of God today. And lives will be changed and never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Over the past several weeks, we've been ministering to you a series entitled Hope for the Future. And uh, there's no way we can go over every single part of what we said, but we do want to give you enough to get everybody on the same page. And to let you know that our CDs of these services are free in our bookstore. Anybody that needs to get caught up and want to see where we've been, just help yourself, avail yourself to that free product in there. Amen. Amen. The hope that Jesus gives is a hope that is never shaken. Listen here. It's never shaken. It is a hope that has been, never been defeated, a hope that has always been, and a hope that will forever be. He is a hope that works in the sunshine, and He is a hope that works in the rain. Amen. Amen. He's a hope that works in the, when you're on the mountain, and His hope works in the valley. His hope works when the sun is out shining bright, or when there's a hurricane force wind in your life. Listen to me right now. The Word of God will work for you, and Jesus is your hope in the midst of your storm. Amen. Jesus gives us 
reasons uh, for hope. And we took the word hopeful and we're pulling out each letter in the word hopeful and giving you attention with it some truths concerning Jesus and how he can bring hope into our lives. We said the letter H stood for the word home. We went into great detail. We don't have time today for each of these letters, like I said. But we said this to you, the H meant home. And for the believer, this world is not our home. We're only passing through. There will come a time when our final residence will be with Jesus in the new heaven. Amen. In the Amen. new heaven that he said we would have. You know heaven's not even Jesus' final home right now. He's waiting on the new earth to be built. And the Bible says we as the righteousness of God will come and reign with him. Amen. Amen. O stands for the fact that our God is omnipotent. That means He's all-powerful. He's all-seeing. He's all-knowing. That brings us hope knowing that our God is above everything in every circumstance and any situation. It gives us hope knowing that this world is not our final destination. Aren't you glad? Hey, with all its sorrow and all its uh, corruption, but our world is going to be with Jesus. Our final home is going to be with Jesus. That gives us hope. Amen. But our God is more than enough. Say, God is more than enough. God is more than our enough. God is more than willing to help. Go ahead and say it. Our God is more than willing to help. Amen. We said P stood for the word prayer. And hopeful, P stood for the word prayer. Uh, we know from reading the word of God that God hears and answers the prayer of the righteous. The Bible says in the book of Revelations that when we pray, the angels take our prayer and the incense of our prayer is brought in bowls from the angels' hands right into the presence of where God is. Don't ever let the devil tell you when you pray that your prayers aren't being answered or your prayers aren't being heard. I know there's times in our lives when we pray, it seems like our prayers just go to the air and just evaporate. But I got news for you. The Bible says our prayers come before Almighty God. And and the Bible says he hears and answers the cry of the righteous. The Bible says his ears not too, his hands not too short that he cannot save, nor is his ear too deaf that he cannot hear. He's an omnipresent help in the time of our need. If that don't give you hope, nothing will. Amen. Amen. Your prayers are being answered by God. Come on. Woo, glory to God. We said the letter E stands for the word eternity. I want you to know when we say the word eternity, we're not just talking a place where we're going to live forever, although we will. When we say the word eternity, it means this. Every promise that God has ever said to us is for eternity. Amen. Ooh, every promise that God has ever made to us as the body of Christ is for eternity. He'll never change his yeah. mind about salvation. He'll, it's a promise that's for Hallelujah. eternity. He'll never change his mind about healing our bodies. That's a promise he made for eternity. He'll never change his mind about delivering us. Amen. That's for eternity. Eternity is a very long place. And as a believer, we can rest assured that the promises he gave us here will be the same promises we'll rejoice and be living in when we get to heaven. Because they're forever and forever. Did you know, you may not know it or not, but all the highs and all the lows in our life, they don't define you. All the highs and all the lows in your life don't define you. What defines you is what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago at a place called Calvary. Amen. That's what defines you, church. It's not what you've done. It's not what you haven't done. But it's what the Word of God says that Jesus has done for us. We need to allow that. Listen here. God even loved us so much that He allowed anointed men to write in tablets and write in books. Amen. What Jesus Christ did for us so that 2,000 years Years past, we can read it today. And the same anointing that was on it when they wrote it the first time is the same anointing that's contained in the book today. When you read by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. That same anointing power, the day they wrote it, when Peter wrote it and pinned it down, is the same anointing and power that's on that word today. Ha, ha, ha. The finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Listen here. That is what defines us. Not what we've done in our past. Not what we've done in our past. It doesn't define you. Thank God it doesn't define us. Thank God what Jesus did is what defines us. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sickness don't define us. Struggles don't define us. Any All the works that we do for the kingdom don't even define us. Jesus defines us. What he's done for us defines us. We said we brought up the word F. For, in the word uh, hopeful. We said this. We said it meant God is faithful. 
It represents His faithfulness. Our God is a faithful God. If you don't believe me, then you need to open up your blinds earlier in the morning and see how faithful the sun is to rise. Because He told the sun to shine, and it's still shining. Amen. In the book of Genesis, He said He put it in the heavens, and it will shine and give light to the day. And then when the nighttime comes tonight, if you don't believe, amen, that God's Word works, go out and take a look at the moon. He said He gave the moon for nighttime so that we'd have light in the nighttime. His Word is forever. If you don't believe, the word works go to the ocean. The Bible says his voice told the ocean how far it could come to the shore. Do you know the ocean could take over the earth? But because of the power that's locked up in the promises of the word of God, the ocean has to bow its mighty knee to God. Yeah. Amen. The ocean had, would have no problem taking over the world. But God's word stops it from coming over yeah. and destroying us. God is faithful. He's never too busy. To hear our prayer. He's never, he's never too busy not to deliver us. The Bible says he's a faithful deliverer. He's faithful in all of his promises. The Bible says here, he's faithful to watch over his word, to perform it. He's faithful. The Bible says this, his mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So what the Bible says is what David said. Amen. Amen. Now the word hopeful contains in it some very powerful truths about Jesus when we look at it and we apply them into our life. Amen. Amen. We use the letter U for unrelenting. And I love this. When I think of my father, this is one of the words that just leaps out in my spirit. He's an unrelenting God. God will never give up on me. Guess what? If he won't give up on me, he'll never give up on you. He's an unrelenting God. He will complete what he began in us. He won't just leave us out here in fragment form. He won't just leave us out here in bits and pieces. The Bible says he's faithful. Listen, he's faithful and he's unrelenting until he gets us all put back the way we're supposed to be. Amen. You know, the best Christian is a Christian that brings all their pieces to Jesus and says, here, take my pieces of my life and you do with it what you will. That's what he's wanting. He'd rather have a person whose life is in pieces come before him with a heart filled with love than someone coming before him like a shining star as if nothing's wrong with him. He would rather you come in your broken state. He'd rather to come. He'd rather you to search diligently like the woman who lost the coin that was valuable to her. He'd rather you seek diligently for all the fragment pieces of your life. Bring every single fragment piece of your life to Jesus. He, listen, he's a master pottery. The Bible says he'll take you, put you on a wheel, and make you brand new again. Amen. He'll make you brand new again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. How many of you brothers shout with you? Come on. God thinks about you all the time. You may not have thought about that, but you're on God's mind all the time. Amen. He loves you with a passionate love. Yes. He loves you more than any love you've ever faced or encountered down here on the earth. You'll never find a love that matches God's love. Ooh, He's yes. passionate about you. Psalms 139 verse 17 says this, How precious also are the thoughts that he has towards me, David says. Oh God, how great are the sum of them when you thought of that. Matthew chapter 10 says this, You are of more value than the many sparrows to the Lord. He takes care of the sparrows. Amen. You ever been in a parking lot? They just love french fries. This generation of sparrows is in love with french fries. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but everywhere I go, I see a big sparrow with a french fry in its mouth. But God takes care of them. I've never, I love Dr. Britton. She's writing a book called I've Never Seen a Worried Bird. You ever seen a worried bird? No. We've never seen a worried bird. We feed half of Catawba County's birds with our blueberries out back in our house. But God is unrelenting towards us when he thinks about us. He's unrelenting about his love towards you. He's unrelenting about when, you, when we have forgiveness, unforgiveness in our heart. When we come to him, he's unrelenting till he gets it taken care of completely in our life. God's not going to give up on you. Other people in your life may have given up on you. Your family may have written you off years ago. You might have had a mate. You went through a horrible separation because they wrote you off. Thought you was of no value. I got news for you. God will never do that to you. Amen. The Bible says he's a father to the orphans. He said, I draw nigh to the brokenhearted. He said, the binding up their wounds. Taking care of them. That's a love that we can't define in our human vernacular. Amen. He will never give up on us. His love towards us, the Bible says, is unrelenting. No matter what we have done to him, no matter what we've said about him, no matter our 
thoughts towards Him. Listen here. The Bible says He's always going to love us. He may not love the sin we're in, but He will always love us. He will always love us. You'll always, let me help you. I'm going to help you with something. This will make you shout. You'll always have a place at Daddy's table. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, that just hit me good. <laughs> Woo, I always got a place at my daddy's table. Amen. There's a chair with my name on it. There's a chair at Father's house at his table with your name on it. And he's waiting every day for you to come and pull up and sup with him. He's waiting every day for you to come to his table and sit and let him love on you and let, let him show you what he's prepared for you. I remember going to my grandmother's house. I loved going to her house because she was such a fantastic cook. If she would have just opened her up a restaurant, she would have made a, a lot of money because she I just thought she was the world's best cook. Every time I went, everything was homemade from scratch. She'd get up like 4 in the morning and start making preparations for dinner at 3 o'clock. While she's making breakfast, she's got something for supper cooking. My grandma made sure when you came to her house, you ate. There was always a place at her table. Strangers, if you were rich, if you were poor, it didn't matter if you were traveling through, if you lived in the town, it didn't matter to her, you had a place at her table. Amen. And you know, my Father God's the same way. Our Father God's the same way. You've got a place at His table. Amen. And you've got a key to His house. Come on, that's good amen. preaching. Right yes, amen. Jesus is the key that gives us access into the kingdom of God. Amen. Every one of you who are born again have a key to Father's house. brings us to the last letter. Of course, the letter L in the word of hopeful. You know where we're going with this one. Come on. Don't even have to tell you. You already know. It stands for the L stands for love. Throughout the scripture, we can count countless, count. Matter of fact, the word love is used more in the Bible than any other word. Amen. God's love towards you is from Genesis to Revelation and beyond. Hallelujah. What do you mean beyond? It means into your life right now. Do you know you're writing chapters right now with your life about the love of God? Amen. When they pull, if we were to look into the realm of the Spirit, you know, when we read about the Apostle Paul, we read in Acts, and we read in 1 Peter, 2 Peter, and 1 and 2 Timothy, and Thessalonians, and all the. You, there's, a, there's a book of Nanak. There's a book of Bernita. Come on. There's a book of Brother Jim. There's a book with, that you're writing right now with your special walk with the Lord. Right now, you, you've got a faith testimony right now with the Lord. Shh, well, that, that felt good, didn't it? <laughs> you've got your own book with Jesus. Amen. Of course, we all know this verse. It'd be impossible to preach this without using John 3, 16, I feel like. I'm using the Amplified Bible here. It says this, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish or come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor Tammy? I'm going to help you. It means that God greatly loved. Now, he could have said he just loved the world, but it put greatly in front of him. He greatly loved the world. And not only did he love the world, but he done something else. Not only does he love you, but because he loves you, that puts you in the position of he now prizes you. Amen. You've got things in your house that's a prized possession. Maybe something, an uh, heirloom that your loved one left you. Money can't buy that, right? An heirloom money can't buy. You, know, you may have a watch, or you may have a necklace, or earrings, or something. Down. Maybe you have great grandma's old Bible. How many of you know money can't buy that? Amen. That's precious, right? Do you know when God thinks about you, He thinks about you like those heirlooms? Even greater. Money can't buy you. That's why He Amen. sent Jesus. <laughs> money can't buy you. That's why He sent Jesus. Jesus was the payment that He paid for our sins. Amen? Those of you who have been rejected, God said, I love you. Those of you who have been abandoned, God said, I love you. Amen. Listen here. Every cruel person, every unkind person, every unappreciated person is loved by God. Amen. You may not be able to love them, but you're supposed to. Yeah. Come on, man. You're supposed to. Yes. But what about those unkind?
kind of people in line when we're waiting. You're supposed to love them. I had a man tell me one time, he said, yeah, the Bible says to turn the other cheek. Man, hit me. And I turned the other cheek and he hit that one too. He said, he didn't tell me what to do after that, so I knocked him out. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to read the Bible and bring it all together. <laughs> he turned the other cheek, but after he hit both of them, he said, the Bible didn't tell me what to do after that, so I knocked him out. But love, God's love, He gives mercy and grace when we don't deserve it. Amen. But He gives mercy and grace when we need it. That's yeah. right. Amen. 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 Let me help you with something. Love gives second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, yeah. seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, all the way up as far as you can count. Love gives that many chances for you to forgive. Yeah. Amen. And when you tell Him about your sins, He'll look at you and say, What sin? Mm -hmm. If you've asked Him to forgive you, the Bible says He throws it into a sea called forgetfulness. To be remembered no more. Amen. But, but you don't know what I've done, preacher. I don't have to know what you've done. I just need to know what the Bible says. And he says, I forgive them of their trespasses and sin for me to remember no more. Amen. That's love for you. Amen. That's love for you. You know, somebody crosses us, it's hard for us to forgive. Mm -hmm. there, there's people who got hurt when they were teenagers, and now they're in their 90s still mad at the people that, were, that they were mad at when they were teenagers. And we got some people that are still mad at people whose graveyard dead. But they still, their life is stuck in a rut because somebody hurt them or said something to them. How many of you know, let me help you, that is such a lie from the enemy. He has tricked so many of the children of God. He has bound so many of us by thinking that way. Listen, God said, Jesus said, I've come to set you free. He who the Son is set free is free indeed. you got to get to the place in your life. Listen, when somebody hurt you, say, mm -hmm, not today, I'm free. Come on. Oh, glory to God. you got to get to the phone and say, I fell in that trap before and I like to never got out. Jesus put a ladder in there. I got myself out. Come on. And now I'm walking on the high road. I don't need to be any longer because he set me free. Yeah. You got to let that stuff go. Life's too short. The gospel's yeah. too important. You are too important to the kingdom of God to hold grudges and unforgiveness and bitterness and strife. You're, you're, you're too valuable to God to do that. Psalms 85 verse 5 says, in the uh, Amplified, it says, You, O oh Lord, are good and ready. Say ready. 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 This will make this whole verse exciting. And ready to forgive our trespasses, sending them away, letting them go completely forever. And you are abundant in mercy and loving kindness to all of those who call upon you. Aren't you glad for that? I don't know about you. I'm glad for that. Love, listen here, love gave his only begotten Son away as a payment for our sins. <coughs> you might not think you have any value. You may not think you're of any worth. Listen, God thought you were, and you came at a high price for Him to buy you back. Amen. I, I like what one man said. He said, who are we to dare tell God who's valuable and who's not? That's right. Amen. And he thought all of us were valuable because He sent His Son for the whosoever will. He, the whosoever wills are valuable to God. Come on. We got to turn up our value expectancy on people. We got to look beyond their faults and see their healthy need. Amen. Remember that old song back in the, I believe it was the early 80s? He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. Yep. What a beautiful song. He looked beyond my, all my faults. Straight to my heart, to my need. Straight to my heart, straight past my heart to my need. Amen. Love always gives. Listen here. Love always gives of their time. Love gives of their talent. Love gives of their gifts and their callings. This is what love does. Jesus, God gave us heaven's best. God started the trend of giving. He said, I'm not going to withhold my best. I love these people that much. I'm going to give heaven's best. So when we work as under the Lord, we give our best, don't we? When we come, we give our best. We give our best time. We give our talents. We give our gifts and our callings. We give the first fruits of our income. Why? Because Jesus set the sample. Jesus, God the Father, set the example. Amen? He was the first one to give, so we just follow suit. We just follow suit. Amen? He, he provided the first sacrificial giving, which was His Son. Praise God. And as a result of it, when He put that seed in the ground, as a result of it, many sons and many daughters were born. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
You are a, you are actually part of the harvest yes. mm -hmm. of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, that's preaching right there. Yes. I'm going to send yes. myself an offer, and I like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because God sowed the seed first. He sowed the seed of hope when he sowed Jesus. Yes. Man had no hope till Jesus came. Wow. He sowed the seed of hope when he sowed Jesus into the ground. The Bible even says, the devil said, if I would have only known what we were doing, we would have never crucified the King of Glory. If we would have only Amen. known that many sons and daughters were going to be born. If we would only know that many sons and daughters were going to heed and hear the word and be doers of the word, we would have never crucified him. Let me help you with something. In the natural, it looked like it was over for Jesus. But in the realm of the Spirit, it's one of the greatest pivotal points in the spirit realm has ever been when Jesus died and rose again. Amen. It may look like in your life your situation is dead, just as dead as Jesus was on the cross, but you've got to go beyond the cross and look what's happening behind the scenes in the realm of the spirit. There's not a devil nowhere that can take your promise from you if you are Jesus in your heart. There's no one that can take your promise. I was telling Julie last night, I said, nobody can take your healing promise from you. Nobody. Nobody. I don't know about you, but I've, I've been on both sides of this fence I'm getting ready to talk about. But I'd rather live with my 90% money that's blessed to God than my 100% money cursed to God. Amen. God can do more with my 90% than he, than he can with my 100% that I haven't made. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. All he asks for is 10% of our money. And sometimes, like my, my pastor said, sometimes when, when we've done it before, that's how we know so good about it. And when we were first given, a, given ties, we'd watch our money go. It was almost like our tear would come in our eyes. And further it got, the sadder we were. And we just, we'll never see you again. <laughs> but I got news for you. If you sow into the kingdom of God, you've sown into your future. Yeah. You can, listen, you'll always get a great investment when you sow into the kingdom of God. Yeah. He's better than any banking system I know. Yeah. He'll, he'll never leave you bankrupt. Come on, when you sow into the kingdom of God, you've got a harvest waiting on you in your future. Yeah. Every dime, nickel, and dollar that you've ever sowed to God, you will run into in your future. You will run into in your future. You will do it. That's the Bible. Look here. Mark 12, verse 17 in the New King James says, And Jesus answered, talking about the disciples, And he said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar, and to God the things that are God. They were having an argument about offering. The offering. And Jesus just settled it. He said, You need to pay your taxes and pay your tithes. Done deal. Now let's get on with the ministry. Come on. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8 says, Will man rob God? Yeah, I thought you was talking about love, Pastor. <laughs> I am. Love always gives. Yeah. Pastor, uh, Pastor David said this one time. You, you ever seen them uh, bikers that have their big wallets and big old chains? He said one time, I don't know if the Lord showed him this or he thought about this, but he said that biker had a big... A Christian had a big old wallet here, and that chain wasn't connected to his belt, but it was connected to his heart. So God, I'm not giving you any money. Well, what do you expect God to do with that? And then they blame God when things aren't working in their life. Blame God when things ain't working in their ministry. You got God's hands tied. He's God. He can do what He wants. He can bring you money if He wants, but He won't. He goes by principle. He goes by principle. Love always gives. Say, love always gives. Love always gives. Love always gives, and love always expects a return. Amen. But love will give regardless if you get a return or not, because that's love. Right. I give to my daughter, and I don't expect anything in return when I give to her. Why do I do that? Because I love her. You know, when you give offerings, you don't give them to this church. If you give them to this church, you've been doing it wrong. Amen. When it leaves your hands, it goes to God spiritually. Amen. It doesn't come to us, it goes to God. Do you know, uh, listen, this is how important offering was to, to Jesus. And he, and he talked about love and offering. Let me see. Catherine, can I borrow you just a minute? Let's see. Can I get a little stool up here, Pastor? Can you get me a little stool and bring it right here? They didn't know that was going to be in a drama today. but <laughs> Yeah, as long as you can sit on it. There was a woman. I've had a group of people in the New Testament. Just sit right there. 
I need you to go halfway down to there. Would you? People were coming from every direction in the synagogue to give offerings. They were rich. They were putting in big lumps of money, bags of money, and being real pompous about it. And Jesus is sitting right here. This is, this is the offering place. You should have me be the oh, devil. Oh, she's going to be. Yeah. I'm not going to be. I'm Jesus today. <laughs> but Jesus, if, if our money's not important to him, why was he sitting here close to the bucket watching? Because money's connected to your heart. Listen, I'm taking you someplace. You ready to go? These people are coming from every direction and they're bringing their offerings to the Lord, supposedly, to the house of God. And they want to be seen with their offering. But there comes a little woman. She's letting all the dignitaries and all the flamboyant people go ahead of her. And she comes and she just puts your money in here. Doesn't say anything real quiet. Two mites. Say two mites. Two mites. Let me help you with the price of what two mites a half a penny. That's what two mites are. A half a cent. And Jesus stands and he says, You gave more than all the offerings of mine. Why was that? She gave out her heart. She gave love money. She gave love money. God saw her heart. He, he's not interested in the amount that you give. He's interested, is your heart involved in it? Did you give because you love him? Or did you give because you were obligated to him? Which one? Love always gives. Thank you, guys. Matthew 6 and 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I remember living next door to a couple they weren't churchgoers. As a matter of fact, they claimed to be atheists. And they had everything. I would stand out my window. And I'm begging God for money for gas. I said, Lord, I serve you. I give tithes and all that. Come on. If I, if I preach in where you live, you can shout anything. Ooh, yeah. I said, God, Amen. I'm faithful. I'm, I'm complaining. I'm like the children of Israel. I'm out there murmuring. <laughs> Hallelujah. My neighbor had a boat. In there, doesn't they? Had a ski do. Had a four wheel drive, had a nice house. Even their dog had a collar that shined. Woo! I got mad at the dog. It was shinier than any jewelry I had. The collar of the dog. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, So you think they're rich, do you? I said, Lord, they're doing pretty good. <laughs> they're doing a whole lot better than me. Financially. And the Lord said, what you see them have right now is the only riches they'll ever own. Woo! Yeah. So the riches that I've given you are eternal, and they're laid up in heaven with me where no dust or moth or anything can corrupt them. Amen. You're richer than all of these people in the city, he said. How many of you know I fell to my knees? He said, forgive me, God, for judging wealth by what I was looking at. He said they just have a lot of credit. Amen. Come on, church. You've yep. all done it. Uh -huh. yep. But God wants love money. I used to be embarrassed because I didn't have much money to give. I wanted to give big money. And the Lord said, is it love money? It would be a dollar bill. Is it a, is it a dollar bill connected to love, your love for me? I said, oh, yes, Lord. Then shut up and put it in. <laughs> I, I've told this story countless times. There was times I didn't have any money. But I wanted to give. I just felt like i got to give God something. Just pull a button on it. I said, God, that's all I had to sell. And I maybe mean, you now I reaped a lot of shirts after that. <laughs> so what man sows is what it also reap. We've got a tin bucket right now full of nothing but buttons. I looked at it the other day and the Lord reminded me as I was preparing for this message a couple weeks ago. Listen, I looked in it and I just put my hands in the bucket. And I was playing with those buttons, all sizes of buttons. And God said, you hear buttons? But I heard money. I heard your heart of love when you gave me that button. Love was attached to it. He's not interested in, you know God doesn't need your material things. He, 
Listen, he walks on streets paved with gold. What could we ever give him that can compare to what he's even looking at? But he wants this. He wants a heart of obedience. He wants a heart filled with love. And when you do that, let me help you. When you, whatever amount you give to the Lord, you'll never be in want. You'll never be in want. Because you look around, there's always somebody worse off than you. That's like the man said, I'm complaining because I've had these same shoes for four years. i got holes in the top of them. I'm complaining because I want a new pair of shoes, God. Bring me a new pair of shoes. Until he's seen the man go by and uh, crutches with no feet. Then he said, God, I'm thankful that I have my feet. So there's always a place to look where you can see it's not too bad where you're living. It's not too bad where you're living. Everything that we give to the kingdom of God will remain in our life forever. Never forget that. No matter the amount. Your gift is eternal. Amen. Did you hear me? Your Hallelujah. offerings and your tithe are eternal to God. He has a record of it. What does this mean? Everything we do for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God is an eternal investment. You can't outgive me. You cannot outgive God. Oh, man. Amen. the time yeah. to Psalm 75 verse 1 says, For you are my hope, O oh God. You are the one that I put my trust in since I was a youth. You can put your trust in God. You can put your trust in God. Amen. Amen. Psalms 119.76 says, May your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promises to your servant. And he, how many of you know he'll do that? His love is unfailing. His love, I'm trying to skip through here and get quickly. I need to get you out of here. Romans chapter 2, verses 4. The latter part of it says, It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. We got it all backwards. We think the more we harp on somebody to get right and get better, the better off it'll be. But that's not what love says. If you want honey, if you want bees, you put out honey. Right? If you want souls, you put out love. They'll come to love. Amen. They'll come to love. Dr. Britton, she says, when I think about your church, she said, and all people, every time I meet them out in the store or whatever, she said, you know, they're flavored just like you, Pastor David. Amen. <laughs> she said, they're always so friendly and always so kind and always so precious to be around. She said, I just love your church people. Love being around them because they're flavored like y'all. Isn't that good? That's a, that's a great compliment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But God's word is forever settled. He says here in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9, Know therefore the Lord your God is God, a faithful God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. Do you know you're part of that thousand generation? You're part of it. His word will never fail us. Jesus sent us his word and it's forever settled. It's an eternal word. Every word he's ever gave you is eternal word. It's an eternal word like us. He's an eternal God. He watches over his word. Help me to perform it. Hallelujah. I'd rather be here with you guys than any place else on the planet Earth. Amen. I could be anywhere. We could be anywhere else. Pastor, and we could. But he won't let us. We don't want to go. If he ever asked us to go somewhere else, he'd have to fight us, I think. <laughs> now, we're obedient. We do it. But he, I hope he keeps me here until I retire. And I'm, I'm going to keep coming. Whoever's the pastor, I'll keep coming. Because <laughs> I love y'all. Why is that? How is that even possible that a person could be so in love with the church and be in love with the church people? I'll tell you why. It's supernatural. You remember when Jesus was preaching and people said to him, people were from him, remember when they said, your mother and your brother are outside and they need to see you. And he said, he looked around and he said, well, who is my mother and who is my brother? And he said, all of you are my mother and all of you are my brother. Referring to, we are all family when we're in the children of God. Amen. When you come to the kingdom, you're all family. Amen. You're all family, amen? amen? We're all family. We spend time together. We're going to spend eternity together. Uh, you know what? The reason we're so not knit together is because, you know, some of our natural family aren't born again. We're just going to have them for just a, a vapor here on there. You're my brother and my sister forever. Amen. We'll spend eternity together. That's why it's so comfortable to be here with you. Amen. 
Why so comfortable to be here in, in the presence of the Lord? I'm going to give you this last little uh, verse here. Acts chapter 9, verse 4. Then Saul, who later became Paul, fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? One translation says, why are you coming against me? One translation says, why do you hate me so bad? Well, he wasn't messing with Jesus. He was messing with God's people. That's how much he loves you. He takes, when somebody messes with you, he takes it personal. Yeah. Oh, amen. And he comes to the rescue. <coughs> amen. He calls blindness to come upon you, didn't he? There's a saying that I printed off the internet. That the author is unknown. I want to leave you with this. Learn from yesterday. Live for today. And hope for tomorrow. Why do we say that? Because knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior is the only real hope you have. We have hope that we have a home we're going to go to forever. Come on. That He's omnipresent. He's a, he's a power that we need in our life. All right? He's, he's eternal. Come on. Uh, he, he's, he's hopeful. He gives us hope. He's faithful. He's committed to us. He's unrelenting to forgive us of our sins. And He loves us with an everlasting love. Amen. 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 Go ahead and stand up today. Did you get anything from me? Yeah. Listen, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, take Him out of here and share Him with somebody. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you say, well, I just... Don't know these people. I'm embarrassed. Don't want to go up there. Listen, you take what you got to your car. <coughs> Jesus will meet you right in your car seat. You don't care. Get home. Get in your bed bedroom or wherever and get along with God. He'll meet you wherever you are. Amen. You can turn anything into yes, an altar. Yeah. Kitchen chair. Hey, you see him. You see him better? Come on. Praise the Lord. looking at the difference. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Had a miracle. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your wonderful presence here. We thank you, Lord, as we leave this place, we take what we've learned with, with us, we share it to everybody, especially in our life, God. We love you, Lord. We thank you for first loving us. Bless these people. We thank you that you bless them in this country, bless them in this city. We release a pastoral blessing upon their lives right now. In the name of your son, Jesus, we ask. Amen. Love two or three people. You know the Amen. Amen. Amen.